<laughs> how have you been good buddy and i was thinking about it bloody hell it's been 2 years it has it has i think yeah the first lockdown i think is when we first got correct friend. correct yeah dad was also there yeah indeed i was thinking about it it was so good dad was sharing all the cool memories <laughs> when yeah. even during the the airtel advertisement days and all that yeah so, yeah that's right Should we get going, buddy? I'm ready. Whenever you are, buddy. And guess what? Uh, this morning I was thinking, great timing, man. Bloody hell, the why the musical soundtrack has just released. Incredible timing. Yeah. And <laughs> amazing timing. And then it's been on a loop the entire day. A beautiful soundtrack, and over and over that whoever saw the play it was an exceptionally like it was a visual treat the entire the entire musical. and yeah uh, been so much fun to work with everybody wow dude i think i couldn't find any other better place to start let's jump straight into the <laughs> musical man because yeah. tell me right from the time sir gave you a call and said hey they come over let's work on this musical tell me right from that point <laughs> Yeah, it was quite cool actually. Um, uh, everybody was doing the Dubai rounds because Sir was is there and has been there for a quite a while, a while. now, working on a, a ton of things with the expo and um, a couple. Uh, in fact, I think during the first lockdown, he uh, sent me one of the tracks to work on, uh, which was the track that um, my voice does feature in a little, which is "Dance of the Atoms." Dance, dance, yeah. And uh, When I heard it, I was like, "Wow, this sounds like uh, this sounds super cool. I love how informative it is. Yet I love how catchy it is, especially the hook of the song. Yeah, indeed. And it started then, but I had no clue about what the musical was about, what was going yeah. on. I yeah. just knew that there was this track and had to be uh, worked on. Uh, after which, I think last year, in about early end of September, I think he gave mm-hmm. me a, he sent me an email saying. Like, uh, are you free for like a couple of months to come down to Dubai to do? And his email subject read literally, it literally, it literally read for some production, fun, and exciting, you know, projects. And I was like, I mean, you don't have to sugarcoat it for me, sir. I'll be, I'll be there. <laughs> But uh, it was exciting. I, I, I jumped right into it, and um, I reached Dubai, and um, yeah, for right off the bat, it was an extremely incredible experience. uh he played me the music of the whatever you know had already been composed because a lot of i mean everything was already composed and ready we were majorly working on background score and putting all the songs into perspective of the musical and but all the songs were ready i heard the songs and i thought um again as usual ar sir has up the game one more notch whenever you feel like okay you know he's reached the pinnacle of uh excellence he just like ups it one more notch every time you work with him and uh, i'm i'm also an avid avid fan of musicals um mm-hmm. unfortunately it isn't a huge part of our culture in india it isn't yes. um even though our films are like partially musicals but the real live theater musical has musicals have been uh, very few in india yeah. um and i have been an avid fan because i love the stage right i've grown mm. up watching the stage part of the music industry and to me performing on stage and being able to sing and dance and act and really express your music is uh the dream mm. it's something that you know i enjoy the most and i luckily had a chance in 2018 to be a part of a musical in bombay so this was like the dream project i was like yes uh, if someone's giving me an opportunity to work on an international music musical mm. that's going to be Gonna have all the stalwarts of the industry and gonna have a fantastically huge production. Mm. Mm. Count me in. I'm I'm so excited about it. So it began like that, and then it's been a beautiful journey. Like uh, I think uh, I got there right off the bat. The mm. actors came in. We recorded with them. It was fantastic to work with uh, all of them because like uh, one of the lead actors, Shubhshri Kandia, she Shubhshri. and she's phenomenal. from Australia. She's from Australia. She's from Australia. and um she was phenomenal like she came in and recorded the songs and 
she she was so good especially because you know theater talent knows how to just nail every emotion and expression right and pitching was perfect like i remember when we were recording her we were like wow that sounds like so she came in as a trained singer yeah of course because i think internationally it is um kind of uh, a requirement to know mm. music as an actor and they right. all train for music which is really cool and mm-hmm. uh, she came in as a trained singer and this was these were complicated songs these were not simple yeah. like one of the songs is in 7 8 and i know a lot of people who can flust get flustered by such odd time signatures yeah. and you know a lot of runs and difficult notes and sirs key you know always he you know he loves all the high range so yeah. much um, it sounds beautiful so it's hard to sing all of her music and she she really did a fantastic job and everybody can hear it in the in the, in the yeah album. indeed indeed yeah. Yeah. Wow, so cool, man! And um, Javed Jeffrey, so much fun. I think um, the best part about this musical for me was the people I got to meet, the people I got to yeah. interact with. Javed sir, of course, I've known him since a very, very long time, and I've been okay. a fan of his as well. He, uh, I remember listening to his Mumbai rap back in the day <laughs> when I was young, and I used to be like, "Chale ka, pine ka, khane ka, pine ka, zone ka." Yeah, man, I remember. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So when he came in, uh, obviously the the main character in in the play uh, is called Andromeda. He's the negative okay. lead, okay. and uh, Javed sir was going to play that. And uh, that character actually opens the show with a rap, which is "Bang the Rap" that uh, yeah, uh, Shivang uh, Thoughts for Now has also sung. Correct. And uh, we wanted to <clears throat> for this for the for for the stage. portion of it we wanted to uh, dub javed sir and it and he was amazing it was so much fun watching him which is at uh, the start of the song right 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 in the beginning right in yeah. the beginning yeah yeah. yeah yeah it was amazing yeah. and then i think the entire process like i got involved even in dialogue stages and with shekhar sir's vision of the entire musical yeah. so it was a dream again working with shekhar sir cuz he's 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 so vibrant with ideas and he's always you know thinking of things mm. uh which can elevate the visual and emotional treatment um mm. also how he worked with the actors to get the dialogues from him i was there in all of those sessions so i was very lucky to mm. have worked with him so closely and i um we i mean i know he we grew, grew fond of each other a lot through the entire mm. process i think we shared a lot of great memories me and shekhar sir as well and that was really special to me because you know to work with someone like that who you've looked up to and then you know getting to have And yeah, I mean, he—he's the kind of person like Rahman, sir, who gives everybody an audience to right. say their feelings and say that, okay, what do you think of that? And I was like, what do I think? Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, Shekhar sir. I mean, what am I? Who am I to think anything in front of you? You are uh, Shekhar Kapoor. But yeah, it was fun. It was definitely super incredible. Then um, I think the other the other few people who I got to work with, like so Hela Kapoor, who wrote uh, who Shekhar sir's sister as well, yeah. and she wrote all the songs. Wow, man! Like, I mean, uh, I know AR sir, sir has also said this, and I'm sure he must say it to you as well, mm. and has will say it in all his interviews. She was, she, she's untapped talent that you know who's written one of the first few times mm. as a lyricist. Mm. But um, again, like Shikhar sir, she's a you know she's she's got so many ideas, and it's like prompt. Like um, I remember Shikhar sir, saying, I mean Rahman sir saying. If I give her to write one paragraph, she'll come with seven options in like twenty minutes, which is incredible, right? What wow. else do you need as a composer? Because then you have so much to work with and uh, so many options and parallels. So again, a lot of lot of fun working with her, Dana, ma'am, Dana Dijani, who is, oh man, what a beautiful personality. Um, just having her in the room is mm-hmm. incredible. So much to learn from her. and yeah i got to interact with her with her on the musical as well and a couple of poetry projects we did from uh oh yeah uh, from from firdos orchestra that uh, yeah. everybody must have seen so posted about so she is fantastic really talented um mm. so much fun so much to learn from and then coming to another set of people who i got to work with very closely was uh, artists in motion and yeah. man um and again, funny enough they are also based out of australia they're also based out of australia and uh, they are a humongous company who's done a ton of work with a lot a whole of experience and uh, again bringing that in in perspective for me i was learning so much from them mm. i was um 
yeah i think i got to i got to work with some of the best people on this project and that's Beautiful. that's something that very few people get so i'm really lucky for this entire experience give it all to uh, rahman sir complete and you deserve it dude gratitude to him <laughs> for it you, you deserve it and you were meant to be there that's how i see it <laughs> thank you thank you so much because i've i've known you for the last couple of years and uh, yeah. i'm sure there's this uh so many other success stories that you're going to see and then i'm going to witness that too so we're going to do a podcast with every success story uh, for sure and i'm going to be i'm going to be chasing you <laughs> <laughs> i love and, that and and uh, just uh, just talking about shaker sir again uh, it i know i mean he gave he gave you the freedom to work and you, he valued your feedback and things like that yeah. but is he also a tough taskmaster i'm just asking i mean in terms of actually working under him to uh, to see his vision getting executed and yeah. he would obviously not um bullshit and he would he no. would ensure that he would get what he wants right so oh, yeah. i i just want to basically get into your shoes and just try and imagine what is it like to work under him <laughs> you know what i think the uh, raman sir and shekhar sir are two peas in a pod and i think that's why they work so well together right. um <clears throat> they're very alike in a lot of sort like lot of things especially right. their creative process i feel like they are uh, shekhar sir is also very open like i said open open yeah. to opinion ideas yeah. so he works with his actors in a way where he'll feed them something but feed off them as well hmm. uh, and i remember that while we were doing dialogue sessions um it was a give and take relationship between them while um, he had obviously certain ideas that he wanted as a director for the uh, for uh, the performance of each character and mm-hmm. how he had written and imagined every character he was also open for javed sir to say his interpretation and say that okay you know i'm trying to play andromeda like this so he was like oh that's that's interesting i never thought about it but that's a possibility let's let's mm-hmm. look into it and um, yeah that's what i realized with Uh, that's a huge learning for me as well as a creative individual mm. it's very important like when you're working in a team to realize that every idea is uh, unique every idea has its own standing and that's what i learned from him he's definitely a taskmaster where i'm sure like you know he um after we but but you know the process is so cool where like you let the actor free you let them enjoy themselves get into the mood get into the understanding of what they're trying to do mm. and then when they finally nail it you're like okay we're there and then continue to just let them you know uh enjoy themselves in that process mm-hmm. rather than from get go being like no 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 i don't want your ideas i want you to do it the way i want i'm the director mm-hmm. cuz then that pressurizes your actor and the performance kind of but rather than that he let you he let you be like okay let's try it and then he'd find a midway to get you to where he wants to be and also where you'd like to be and uh, that's beautiful that's that's very incredible. nice Yeah. so good and similarly uh, mm-hmm. what was it like obviously working under sir in in the musical world so to speak like uh, what i'm trying to uh, uh wanting to know rather is how do you know what you're going to be working on when you wake up in the morning like do you get briefs about okay hrida this is what i'm aiming to achieve by the day or what is it like tell me man talk me through <laughs> I I'm talking like it's an IT bloody team or something like that where we have this daily stand up saying Chanda you have to do this and then surely it's not like that but I'm just just wanting to know what it is what is it like so you you spent a couple of months there so what what's your what was your day in your life there under Rahman sir <laughs> see I think touch wood uh, luckily um I've you know been we've been all like now the team is so solid with Rahman yeah. sir we've all been working with him for so long we understand you know how the process works even though there how is how he operates yeah it's there's there's it's very unsaid but it's very understood as well um there is there is certainly a process there's certainly a way to get towards things mm. um and uh, with Rahman sir I think it's very felt you know it's very like oh, this today feels like the right day to do this and we must do this and we must find a way to get it done because i'm in that mood right now which is yeah. perfect right because maybe you lose that mood today and you'll be in another mood tomorrow and we might want to do that tomorrow uh so that is a huge way of how he works but over and above that i remember because um you know i was involved as a music supervisor i had yeah. to take a lot of ownership of a lot of things and mm. you know put certain places where he had 
to do something and finish something, which is again a job profile that I was given. And um, I I think with Sir, the coolest part is again the same thing, right? He uh, when he gives you a job, he expects you to uh, find your way through it and then come back to him and then he'll help you solve your problems, right? right. Uh, which is incredible because he's he's done all the work. It's the the com- compositions are done. It's just about execution now. It's about maybe recording a few pieces, maybe, you know, putting things together, editing things the way the director would like or so would like and uh, getting it into the context of the entire musical, the mu- like the music into the context of music. Mm. Basically, like you're hearing the songs right now in the album. Some of them mm. are shorter in the musical or are Correct. differently structured in the musical right. uh, because yeah. they're trying to say something, right? Um, so what was, again, because like you said, how is it different in a musical? I think in the musical, what happens, and I realized with Rahman sir as well, mm-hmm. is that in the musical, um, because we're not taking away from a scene, right? Like in a film, uh, the song is um, has its own identity in the film. It's not mm-hmm. literally necessarily a part of the storytelling of the film, mm-hmm. right? Because there can be songs like that jump out of the universe of the film and come back. But in a musical, it, the relevance has to be 100% when you're going in from dialogue into, uh, you know, into a storyline. So the amount of, um, you know, presence that you have for lyrics, for mm. direction is the most important thing. And I saw Rahman so getting involved with that for the first time. Right. Like going to rehearsals, uh, you know, giving his opinion to Shekhar sir of, you know, because it's this song next, what do you think if we say this and stuff yeah. like that? And, you know, them jamming on ideas and coming up yeah. with things. And that that was obviously extremely different because in a film, the film's sometimes shot, the film's shot pa- like on a, a parallelly while the music is being worked on and then they all come together and yeah. become one. Yeah. Here it was all happening together, which is again, really beautiful to see. Sir at rehearsals, working with <laughs> actors, you know, really cool. And I hadn't seen that side of him because he's done another musical called Bob May Dreams Correct. a couple of years ago and Lord of the Rings as well. But I wasn't around when uh, he was working on those projects. Yeah. So this was super refreshing for me. Amazing. From my point of view. <laughs> and and can you also tell me what was a day in a life for Sir? Like uh-huh. wh- what's a typical day for him whilst the musical was on? Put it that way. Wow. Um, I know he juggles is. with millions yeah. of other things, but I'm just keen to know because you being so closely working with him during the musical... Just yeah, wanting to yeah. know what have you observed, what the things that you've seen him, the way he operates, or anything of that sorts. Yeah. Um, see, I think with Sir, he's um, um, he he he's like like everybody knows he's super spiritual mm. and um, extremely connected with the spiritual world, and also he's very inquisitive. He's very. Uh, he's very excited to meet new creative people, jam with them, talk with them. And um, I think the spirituality and the work meets at such a beautiful place. And that's what makes him. Mm. Uh, because his music is spiritual to him. Like when he's working, he is actually feeling like he's connecting with something bigger, which is, you know, what music is all about. So mm. it's beautiful. So I have never seen him have a typical day. Right. You know what I mean? There, there's no such thing as typical with Rahman sir. It's all, it's, it's, it's an incredible, you know, mm. it's all uh, pushing boundaries. It's all waking up at sometimes six mm. in the morning and starting work, waking up at 12 sometimes and starting work and sometimes working through the night, sometimes working through the day. Um, and it's all about, I think with him, when, this, when he feels the sp- spiritual energy, you know, inside him truly is when it all comes out. But um, in Dubai, I saw him um, really, really enjoying uh Interactions with people, you know, sitting down, chatting, uh, learning new things, which he always does. But I think <clears throat> because anybody who was coming down to Dubai from from the creative field was coming and meeting Sir, coming and seeing the Pridha studio. So that gave us a lot of energy uh, to mm-hmm. work with. Mm-hmm. And like in Chennai, obviously people do come for work and stuff like that, but nobody's visiting Chennai to come and say, hey, I'm visiting Chennai, can I come see you? Uh, Dubai, like everyone was visiting, right? Because everyone's performing at the expo as well. Yeah. So I saw everyone walking into the studio and meeting him and him having, you know, jams with them, chatting, talking about really cool things. And I think also what happened in Dubai is because of the Firdos Orchestra and the studio and 
this mammoth project which was expo which he was involved in very closely yeah i think um he was really um he was very very motivated and i think he was very very enriched with right. ideas it was fresh new people new energies working on something so humongous mm. uh it was exciting so good yeah in <laughs> fact i remember i had a chat with sir just couple of days before the musical was going to start uh-huh. um and he was sounding so so excited about it yeah and i told him sir i'm i'm really sorry i'm unable to make it because of this border closure and all that i, I know <laughs> yeah we were hoping for you to come i remember we spoke as well yeah indeed uh, and uh, yeah i think it was a once in a lifetime project also for sir because um it was and for all of us because it was exciting like there was this whole um, technically there was this whole 316 uh, indeed, immersive indeed. sound yeah. there was this whole 360 immersive sound experience with the music which was again something very new for us so we were all extremely excited to make that work in the favor of our uh, music because generally you have atmos or you have inner theater where there are <clears throat> a certain number of uh, speakers mm. which are on the top and on the sides but here you had this huge ring of how many 27 speakers around you wow. which kind of you entered into the space and got immersed in that experience so right. music was coming from all over and if 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 the actor was standing somewhere there then his dialogue would come from there <laughs> and if the actor was standing somewhere there that dialogue would come from there and you know that that's, amazing that, yeah so definitely a lot of work went into that but it was exciting wow super exciting. tell me one thing dude um obviously mixing and mastering soundtracks for movies is one world Yeah. and then now this is a completely different world yeah. what was done differently for this like for the musical per se because the fact that you mentioned that there were speakers all over the place uh, how was it treated like from from a musical it, mastering yeah. standpoint or mixing every standpoint every way it i think in every way it was different hey i remember the first day i came in i think a couple of days into that shekhar came up shekhar sir came up to me and he said um remember this is a musical that mm. everything depends on what they sing you know it's like uh what they sing is the most important thing and i said yes of course because that's moving them ahead in the story they have to hear every word of what they sing so clarity you know um pre- presence of like unlike a pop song we we'll keep the presence of the vocals way above the music so that everything is clean and heard uh but more than that i think the process was very cool again another person who i met and worked with very closely on this film was eva reestad who's um, right. mixed and mastered this entire album uh, along with the Firdaus studio team like yeah. Navneet Balachandran and yeah. uh, the other boys at the studio so again she's a phenomenal engineer she's worked mm-hmm. with uh, Hans Zimmer for a oh, ton wow. of projects and she's uh, worked on a lot of films in Hollywood and she understood film score and immersive sound as well uh so it was extremely exciting and then we also worked with this team who was actually handling the the venue sound which was uh Scott Wilkinson and uh, you know his team um and they were phenomenal Martin as well so the right. two of them came together and actually made it all possible because we had to mix the song in a certain way in 7.1 deliver those the the song stems the bass right. the cuts downs of the songs to them um and then they would put it into the immersive context and then we'd sit with them and tweak and make sure that everything sounds right and makes you feel really involved in the music mm. so it was a very very different procedure because for another for a film basically we'd deliver a 7.1 mix for the theater mm. and also uh studios for the for for playback for uh, mm. what do you call it for for, for audio streaming etc yeah. and also we've also done dolby atmos for this album for apple music streaming purposes and tidal etc dolby atmos uh right. so so actually we've mixed this album like four times <laughs> which has huh? been Yeah, which has been crazy for us because we had to mix it for the musical first, which was in a right. different set of voices because Shubhshri was singing in the the musical, Javed Ji was was singing, was rapping in the musical. Um, so there was another, there was a completely different mix done for the musical, yeah. then which was cut and edited according to the musical and delivered uh, to Scott and his team, Scott and Martin, who put it into the immersive context. And there was the album release, which was supposed to be happening in stereo and Dolby. So Correct. that's another two mixes. And yeah, it's been crazy. It's been fun. It's been fun. Wow. And 
and we also did initial stereo mixes for the uh, for, for the rehearsals because when they wanted to rehearse they wanted to rehearse in studio stereo so we mixed this album like four times and um, we had a lot of fun me and eva have had uh, loads of sleepless nights working on this project and sir of course um, <clears throat> but um, again like so much um, because sir's music is not like simple music nor is it it's <laughs> it's uh, it's transcending music there's every instrument is super important we had to make sure that you know everything just uh, resonated the same way he wanted it to resonate Right. And then we had the Firdos studio uh, and the Firdos orchestra play on our tracks. Uh, yeah. And that was just really exciting because we had to record with them and uh, work with them to get uh, all the strings and, uh, you know, uh, everything, all the orchestral parts sounding brilliant. There are a couple of things I just want to go a little deeper, if that's okay. Sure, uh, sure, sure. In terms of um, recording with the Firdos orchestra, right? Yeah. Like, Uh, you had briefings from sir in terms of this is what needs to be recorded or i mean how do you know what what had to be recorded oh, from yeah. the orchestra he, people on he, the day he writes all the parts he's right. the orchestrator he writes every part right um, like basically we would sit and uh, he would pro- program all the string portions everything you hear has been programmed by him he would program it all and then we would get it transcribed so we had uh, another boy in uh, dubai called yeah. Shubham who sat and transcribed all the scores right. and wrote all the parts for the orchestra then the papers were given to the orchestra and so would walk in they would rehearse a few times so would walk into the studio and then brief them saying i want this to sound more romantic i want this to sound more sad i want this to sound this way okay let's do this this way <clears throat> i want more aggression in the marcato parts etc so he was always there supervising yeah. all the recordings and sitting wow. right there and making sure we got the right takes because you know um that's how involved he was in this project he wanted to make sure that mm. it sounds the best uh, and uh, you know and that's always uh, so he yeah i think um, briefings definitely we did get briefings in fact we got super clear pictures from him of what he wanted uh, it was majorly just us making sure it translated out there and helping right. him uh, in in the process of getting it finally onto the audio system right and then you would record it and yeah. then it goes for a review with sir is that how it is uh so so for all firdos orchestra sessions he was there while yeah, we were yeah. recording it okay. so he was right there for review he literally chose the takes that were final and right. then we kind of then i would take it all and comp it and or eva would take it all and comp it put it into a session play it back mix it clean it up a little more and then play it back for him for review like you said Wow. and if 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 we felt something wasn't up to the mark or anything we'd obviously re-record it then right. we would get a brief saying you know that part I, i feel like it can be done again so just right. call them and let's do it again okay. etc wow, if if amazing. necessary if necessary yeah so good and uh just something that i wanted to clarify rather i just wanted to understand it better is um, you obviously have recorded the songs and stuff like that for the musical right and then uh the leads like javed jeffrey and then shubhshree Shubh Shubh. will have some so they are lip syncing when the songs are playing in the musical yes they are right to their own right. voices though huh to their own voices though yeah correct correct yeah, correct yeah. because that's how it has been recorded that's correct yeah yeah so they but they are just lip syncing not really singing <clears throat> no no not for this musical because i think there was a technical issue with um, a lot of things because it's a very different kind of space it's not not right. uh, like because it's like uh, there were a lot of technical issues with one right. like shaker sir did want them to sing live and 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 these are artists who are who actually do sing live and perform yeah. like shubshi has done Uh, a ton of musical theater yeah, like you said cinderella and a ton of other musical theater in australia uh william who is also a very very senior actor who played jid he uh, william zappa he has done a ton of musicals back in yeah. australia so these people are all trained to do this as well and of course javed sir is a phenomenal actor and is a great rapper as well so he, he they, they were all able to do it like mm. it was just like there were technical constraints that kind of put us into the path where we were like uh how do we make this experience perfect for everybody and i think this was the way to go for that so they were miming to most of it but they had their dialogues oh uh, no even that was mimed oh is that right yeah yeah, yeah. everything was mimed uh because like i said they weren't mic 
for for oh, the wow. and also the fact that they were all running around as well right exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 you'd be huffing and puffing otherwise yeah i mean most musicals is like that but this is a yeah. truly huge space you know it it's is. like a, i could see i don't it. know the exact um thing but i remember somebody telling me it's the size of two football fields the entire space Oof, is that right yeah yeah it's the dome I mean, obviously yeah yeah the whole dome correct yeah the whole dome is the size of two football fields so that's holy cow that's humongous right and uh, yeah and um, a lot of space in that like 30% of space is performance space 30 to 40% nearly i, th- I would say 30% is performance space so that's humongous uh, to cover uh, as an actor and also sing and dance and uh, give your dialogues without huffing puffing like this wow 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 <laughs> and bro just uh describe the experience because i saw one of your pictures uh on the day you wrapped up the musical and you were heading back where you were in the middle of the uh, the dome and then somebody had shot that picture yeah, uh, like, uh, kevin do said the shot that huh? picture kevin do said shot that picture uh, right. someone who was also involved heavily in the musical i mean of course he was the executive music producer and again yeah. huge so much fun working with him because i got to learn so much he's done so much work back in hollywood yeah and worked on so many projects with her so he was fantastic sorry continue your question no no yeah i just just want to experience what it is like inside the dome i mean you oh. you've been there and then uh i know you you mentioned about the speaker part yes i'm i'm yeah. trying to visualize more because i am not the not had the fortune of being there so i'm just trying to experience why what you're describing <laughs> I'm I'm going to try my level best. Obviously this is not an experience you can really sum up with words Understand. because you have to be there. I mean like it's that I beautiful. Agree. But um I remember watching a couple of shows and of course I'll talk about by the musical specifically. Uh but uh, you know um I think there's um like I said on on one of the days when I was leaving that this show is something that has something for everybody mm. because there is beautiful animation on the screens which kind of immerses you as well, you know, because you're like mm. it's 360 animation of things moving and literally coming into you you feel like it's 3d it's like 4d actually not even 3d because mm. it feels like it's all around you and you're inside this space that they have re you know transformed into space let's say you know like mm. into outer space and you're seeing planets that are coming closer to you and you're literally pushing back because you're like oh shit this planet is coming close <laughs> and it's stuff like that that made the visual treatment really beautiful then there's this concentric circle in the middle uh, yeah, which is a stage that makes you feel uh, like does it actually it rotate it no, rotates right? as well it rotates oh it does it there is there is an outer ring of the stage that right. rotates yeah yeah so again i think the one of the songs time and space has this beautiful choreography which is done by nikos yeah and he's phenomenal again uh so he did this beautiful choreography where like there all the actors are like you know posing and kind of dancing in this really sculptured sort of situation and all these you know you can see all these beautiful life forms and the whole stage is rotating and shubhshi is walking through them it's just uh it's 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 a treat to watch again the good part about the circle being a 360 i mean the stage being 360 is every human being in that dome feels like they're a part of the show uh because there is no fixed center right right so everybody is the the actors are interacting with every side of stage so it's a lot of fun wow yeah so good i, I was just trying to visualize everything that you were describing that's all and and then of course whilst working through the musical uh have you had any off the record chats and stuff like that with so i mean would you guys hang out to eat or what is it like i mean does have does so have a bit of downtime and uh, oh definitely definitely in fact i think um <clears throat> because one of the studios was in his home uh correct uh, so and we were working from there as well as yeah. the fifth door studio uh we had a lot of opportunities to just sit down and have tea with him or have a coffee with him and just chat and sit and i remember the whole house is like you know um there were chocolates everywhere and, but and he, he doesn't eat chocolates though he kept complaining he's like why is the chocolates everywhere <laughs> <laughs> but he'd pick up one and eat one as well and we'd also and uh, i remember we were always like sugar high we were always like oh my god super alert because we're eating so many chocolates uh so a lot of downtime with him we got i got the opportunity to go for a couple of breakfasts with him as well um what well, what does he eat when you went out for breakfast oh i remember but i, I think he ate a double poached egg right and uh, some some juice um, okay yeah 
Because you one, know, one, I, one morning, I get very. One morning, <laughs> yeah. One morning we woke up. Uh, we didn't wake up. I mean, we were walking through the night, yeah. and I was uh, I was there, and I enter and I enter upstairs to get some water or something. And he's like, "You want to have samosa?" And I was like, "So it's so early in the morning." He's like, "He's like, I need to eat, man." And I was like, "Yeah, no, so do I." So we both have had samosas in the morning as well. So. <laughs> So did you actually go out somewhere to get that, or as in you had oh, no, it no, outside? No, no. So basically, I think um, our dear, dear, dear Abdul, who is phenomenal, Abdul Haim. What a guy! Uh, yeah. He, I don't think he ever lets us go hungry. Ever lets us go without having transport, and any of us, and of yeah. course, sir, specifically. And there'll always be food stacked up for sir. And so if he knows sir is awake, he will make sure he orders some food for him. And I think he had yeah. ordered some, uh, you know, samosas and kept for so uh, good. for snacks because he knew we we're gonna do do an all nighter. So uh, we had the opportunity of having that. So he 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 gets full credit for me for taking care of us. He was like all He's our, a nice dude. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was all a he was all a m- mother and father through this entire. Trip. <laughs> like, Yeah, because the reason why I asked you about the breakfast is because, of course, sir is very much aware about my passion for creative creativity with my uh, food as well, and yeah. then <laughs> predominantly some of most of my creativity is around coming up with the AR ARR thing on the food, <laughs> and he's aware. And uh, one of the conversations he said, most of the times in your dishes there are eggs. And I said, "Ama huh? sir, I told him in Tamil that Ama yeah. sir, I really like eggs." I said, "He said, 'Yeah, me too.'" <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. He does. He does. Yeah. And uh, what else did I want to ask about the musical? Uh, what were the key takeaways, man, for you when you wrapped it up? And I, I did read your post. I absolutely loved it. I felt mm-hmm. like it was my own buddy and my brother <laughs> being there and worked on it. I I like reading posts like that and looking through the pictures that you had posted as well so but I just wanted to hear it from you you spent good few months there and yeah. of of course worked under the legends and more to come as well so yeah keen to hear from you buddy uh i think overall like i said in my post as well it was a very very emotional and a very very like beautiful connected uh yeah. four months that i spent in dubai uh working on this project and other things as well and uh, <clears throat> made made a lot of friends family all these guys uh incredible i i i would you know i i would not miss home for one second because these guys made me feel like we were at home and we grew a really nice bond with each other all of us um maybe yeah. kevin eva um shubham navneet uh, all the folks working on the project um and uh sir of course who made us feel like we weren't away from our parents ever and made us feel you know really really secure and safe and always you know uh he's he's always one of the you know uh, kindest to all of us to everybody that works for him or actually anybody in general he's so kind in general but yes. uh, super kind to all of us um we i think um um uh, the expo was something that was so larger than life one mm. could feel lost in it right mm. uh, so i remember the first day when i walked in and i knew that i was going to work, be working for this project i we all had like a nervous breakdown we were like my god this is too big this is like a lot of work and we have very little time and this is crazy how are we going to do this uh, but um, like i said artists in motion and everybody who came together to make this happen martin uh, scott Yeah. and um, our team at our back end helping me supporting me making this go through um yeah it's 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 something that um i would say was complete complete team effort that uh, we could do this so i've made a lot of friends made a lot of uh, uh yes, lifelong good. memories uh from this project which nice. i know so that's that's the most important thing for sure me. i agree and of course brilliant music so just grateful to be a small part of it <clears throat> where you know you can associate and say that i have worked on something like this that's 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 really uh right. something yeah that i cherish super and related to the musical yeah particularly about the song um, that you worked on um, dance yeah. of the atoms right atoms yeah um uh, blaze sang that yeah yeah the song was first performed for the first time in the concert as you know right that's right, right? and then it came up on youtube once the expo people um, you know uploaded it later 
Correct. One thing we as fans, what we felt was for Blase's voice, there was a bit of an overdose of auto tune. Ah, uh-huh. okay. Is that right? Am uh, I right? Or uh, in case, if why why is that so? If that was the case. I think I think uh, you know every um because it was supposed to sound like the universe speaking to the characters down there right. it was supposed supposed to sound really um out of this world so i think the idea behind processing it in that way not just mm. auto tune but other processes that of were course. used in it as well uh were were used to give it a very very cinematic effect on stage uh it, it was it was done from a very very specific point of view because i think you don't understand it if you don't see the musical and re- realize why why that is being done because actually that's not being sung on anybody by stage Correct. uh Blase's part. That's that's um that's the universe singing to. Um, oh, understand. To right. Shubhshree. So okay. we want, Sir wanted to make it in a way where he was like, "How do we um make this sound different than the rest of the voices?" And I think this is the way that he, did. he chose it. Yeah, that, that that that's the way he chose. So yeah, I think in in this sort of a project, you do. Uh, I don't deny how fans wouldn't um, understand or. Um, want to know why this decision was made but i'm glad you asked me this question uh because yeah some of these choices i think sir makes are sometimes so um sublime because you don't realize it but then later you're like oh yeah it it mm. makes sense now right and i remember uh, he he said this and then when i saw the show i was like yeah it makes sense it 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 does sound like something outworldly he said it should sound futuristic in a way right so this was this was the thought that right behind it. right yeah Yeah. so good and and by any chance have you asked him how he arrived at that groove for that track at the, at the because it's so bloody addictive <laughs> uh, <laughs> i have yeah. played it uh, at least 100 times since this morning and i've played the youtube video so many times and then uh, every time i felt like you know hearing that track is just for the beats most importantly and the the way it starts um I'm just curious that's all that's why I'm asking. <laughs> I actually haven't ever asked him wh- where that came from. Um right. but um I know that um Sifana and J and J Ukdansa Dansa was the first uh, lyric that was written and locked for the song. Right. And um and that means just dance everybody in Afrikaans in right. Uh, right. in African language. And um I think he the the idea of making people dance in that song was so important that percussion had to be a certain way, and I think he 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 just perfected it with it, right? Like I also, I mean, I think there's not been one time where I've gone like and danced while watching the musical when that song comes on, and I kid you not, that song, uh, people I've seen people like I I think I have some videos as well which I'll share with you, uh, mm-hmm. where I've seen like kids get up and like enjoy that song and dance. So everybody feels like dancing, and that was the whole point of the song because it yeah. says. Come on, just forget everything and dance. So good, and um, and also the other way. Yeah, actually relating to the videos and stuff that you said, um, I think I remember uh, just sort of dancing to it because I had this music playing right in this room, and then my dog yeah. was also around. I posted that as a story, and you know, Sir saw it and he put a smiley there because he saw it. <laughs> <laughs> and That's and funny. also, I mean, is the groove especially the way it starts is that something what sir comes up with or it's basically a music producer who comes up and then sir works on or uh, what's the process see i think uh, with sir no there are many processes uh, where music producers do work on stuff and then he uh, kind of polishes it or vice versa and stuff yeah. like that yeah uh, a lot of times that happens but uh, i know for a very very specific uh part where in this musical he's worked on everything himself uh yeah. like very few songs had additional music programming happening uh cuz he was like even with dil bechara i remember when we worked on dil bechara yeah. he was so involved that like we'd be like you know should we should we get some help to produce this portion or do you have a brief can i tell somebody to do this and he was mm. like no no i want to do it i want to do it so he 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 loves producing that's another thing you know he loves sitting down and trying out tones and trying out and playing with production and he's the best at rhythm uh, one of the best composers i know who with rhythm uh, nobody can think of rhythm the way he does yeah. so it's so fun to like i've sat there and watched him produce so many times and uh, sometimes you feel like 
okay that's an interesting choice but then when you later listen to it in context of the song it just sounds like wow it's just it just is made for this song uh, so i feel like uh, somewhere along the lines maybe the song uh, the, the the line uku dansa dansa inspired that beat or that beat inspired uku dansa dansa i don't know that i'm going to have to check and find out but definitely that that beat i agree with you makes you feel like dancing for sure i don't know also like uh, bang as well to be honest oh, yeah it 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 has got me hooked <laughs> so i don't know something you know I've, this morning at 5:45 am is when i um saw the update because that's when i woke up and then then i straight away looked it up on spotify and then uh, it was there because it it was already the uh, 18th of march here right so mm-hmm. and then i started playing and that particular song it played for nearly 16 17 times in a loop the first song itself until wow. i went to the second one it's it's a, it's it's a very catchy tune and it's a cool yeah. song i love it i I'm, i think uh, shu has done a thoughts for now he always yeah. likes to be called as thoughts for now yeah yeah <laughs> uh he has done a great job he, he he has also been on the podcast oh yeah. lovely he he's uh, really cool i love the way he's written that uh, yeah. i think especially he made history sound cool uh the history Correct. of creation sound really really yeah. cool and that was that was like shocking to me because i was like how how is this going to be uh, you know sounding mm. at the end of it all but yeah. uh, it's come together so beautifully with his lyrics yeah uh, so i'm i'm so happy for him he's done a fantastic for sure guy. for sure and dude and um obviously as part of your journey you've oh, also yeah. gotten into music production yeah as yeah. well right yeah. now th- dude I, i i'm very curious i i i love to hear stories in that front too what was the learning process like i mean when you decided to delve into music production like what what was your daw where did you start and then um where did you get to and yeah, yeah talk me through it man <laughs> uh so, yeah no i mean it was very organic uh, like so basically i went to km in 2013 and i wanted to only learn vocals because i wanted to be a playback singer that was i didn't know the, that you studied at km i did i did i went for one year i did wow. my okay. uh, certificate in vocal performance because i right. wanted to be a singer so i didn't want to learn any theory i didn't want to learn any of that yeah i was just wanted to learn how to sing technique how to be on stage etc those kind of things and of course theory of singing yeah uh so when i went there i um i had a little bit of musicianship in me because i used to play a little bit of the guitars yeah uh, very very basic but i used to play yeah. and uh, a little bit of keys i had learned a little bit of keys on my own yeah. Uh, yeah. because i wanted to you know i thought it would be cool to get a piano so i wanted to learn the keys so i learned the keys and book got myself a piano and used to play every day but basic black like block chords and stuff like that yeah i think when i reached came and started interacting with people like parag who was in my batch at that time there was me parag chabra and a couple of other kids pavan pavan who's doing right. really well right now in yeah. the uh, telugu industry pavan uh, yes ch and we were all together and i think we used to like have these sessions where we'd sit and just chat about sir and about the music we liked and about what we knew and what we didn't and it kind of gave me a lot of confidence in myself that oh, okay i'm not not bad like these kids who are professionally doing music yeah. uh, as musicians or producers and programmers I, i i know quite a bit like i can i i can manage to be one of these people and um, i think that they gave me a lot of confidence to try and explore uh, so and at that point of time i used to make my uh, trips i was very very um, lucky to have the opportunity to go to sir studio and sit there and i told him sir i won't bother anybody i promise you i will sit somewhere in the corner and just watch y'all work and if you need me to do anything i'm more than happy to do it mm. so i remember uh during infinite love was the first time he kind of tried to involve me in the project mm. and from there on it just became like somebody who would just be hanging at the studio and i remember watching um santosh um, um nitish uh, shrinidhi yeah uh, all these people working there and uh, there'd be programmers who walk in and walk out i've sat in on sat in on, on a couple of recording sessions and watched them work on the door and it was always very very like i was very inquisitive i think at that point of time right uh, it's great to be inquisitive because that's how i learned i i literally just watched and i was like okay he's pressing r okay that means he's recording <laughs> 
Okay, let me go home and try that. So I'd go home and press R and be like, oh yeah, it's recording. Cool. Nice. And it was literally like that. It was a trial and error process from then. Yeah. Because I got myself a laptop. I downloaded Logic Pro that Sir also uses mm. majorly apart from Pro Tools. But majorly everything, the creation process, process the songwriting process and the recording process was done mm. majorly on Logic in uh, all of Sir Studios. So I downloaded Logic for myself. I bought it and I said, okay, let me try my hand at this. And I, initially I only worked with all the sounds that were in built in logic hmm. and I started producing I bought a small MIDI keyboard for myself and headphones and that time I didn't even have a sound card so I used to plug in straight into the jack with a microphone or my guitar I would plug in and play and um, I think slowly gradually slowly gradually uh, it helped that I had people around me to always give me feedback to give me help I remember playing one of my very early scratches to someone like Gullu and saying, bro, I played something. So we were on a flight together. We were going for a concert during Rehman Ishq in 2015, 14, 15, something like that. And I said, bro, I've, I've produced this track. I can't even call it produced. I said, I've written this song. I want you to hear it. So I, I played it. Um, and he was like, it's really nice, man. What did you use? I was like, you know, like regular logic stuff. I was like, wow, awesome. Really cool, yeah. You should keep going. So I think they gave me a lot of help. And then he told me, he gave me ideas. You know, you should use this piano. I said, where would I go to get a piano like this from? So he'd be like, okay, download Omnisphere. Go buy Omnisphere or whatever. Like, you know, buy these plugins. And then, yeah. then it got into plugins. Then uh, I think once, you know, once you're in it, then you'll find ways to excel at yeah. it. Because then it became about, okay, now I need, okay, now this sounds sounding good. I need to get it mixed. So then I'd call up somebody, like I'd call up a Parag or a Gullu or somebody I knew and said, who do you think can help me with this? And they'd suggest somebody. And that somebody would be would say that, okay, I need to record your vocals again because I recorded like crap, obviously. They would record it on a phone, I mean, like on a mic straight into a um, laptop. So I'd go and record it at a studio and then I'd see, okay, how are they processing things? How are they editing? How are they, you know, what is their process? Then I started working at the studio with Sir. Right. Where I'd just walk in and record other people. Um, I would not be the person on the door, but I'd be yeah. the person sitting next to, like I'd be the supervisor. Right. Like, the and that was at the Powai studio? Uh, that was at Powai and Chennai, both. Yes. I used okay. to go up and down and yeah. do some sessions, etc. Uh, at that time, I got to learn a lot more because like, yeah. you know, um, a lot of things started opening up. I started getting a little more comfortable with the door, started mm -hmm. learning shortcuts, ways to make life easier. Oh, okay. And see, somewhere I would say like, of course, it did help that I knew a little bit about music and uh, a little bit of, okay, something's wrong with that note. Okay, but what what's mm. wrong? I had to figure out later. So it was a process and glad that I got the environment to learn uh, more and excel more. Mm. So I would say, and anybody who asked me, bro, how do I learn production? I'd say, put yourself in the environment. Go assist a producer, assist a music composer, just sit there, be there in that environment and be open to learn. Like be, keep your eyes open 24 seven, anything they say, write it down. If you, if you're not somebody who can remember it yourself, but write it down, go home, try it. It's so rewarding mm. because when it works, it's phenomenal. Like it's incredible. If it doesn't work, then you, then you're like, shit, why didn't it work? Now? So you go Google stuff, YouTube stuff and find a way to make it work because you're so hell bent on like, no, yeah, but I saw him doing that. Like something right. is wrong, you know? So yeah. Uh, and then from there, I like kind of slowly, slowly built this setup here. Where yeah, I, I love know. it. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and you're into mixing and mastering too? Or? Um, no, not myself. I don't right. mix and master. I but you know how the process works. Yes, yes. I've I've Touchwood assisted a couple of albums now, uh, even with Sir, uh, where I've been involved in the mix, mixing mastering uh, process. And you know, while there's an engineer there, I help them. Saying, of course, you know, I think you know we can do this this way, etc. Right. So yeah, quite quite understood with the whole process, but it's not something I delve into myself as an en yeah. engineer. Yeah. Is that an area of passion? Mixing and mastering, no, definitely right. not. I mean, I mean right. not passion i feel like um or area of interest is, rather huh yeah area of interest not for me for sure yeah. because i feel like um i like that someone else can mix and master because that's your first correct. feedback correct as a as a producer and someone like me who does it all as well where i compose so sometimes what happens is the song is composed in this room recorded in this room yeah. uh, written in this room sung in this room just by me Correct. Like two Avas have the song that I released a couple of months back. 
what happens is now it's been made created in this bubble so i need some fourth party third party second party to tell me hey bro this sounds like crap <laughs> so that's another pair of five yeah so i need i need a i need someone like a, i have this boy who helps me mix and master my songs he's nice like really cool uh, ayan so he comes in and helps me on that <laughs> nice and and something that i wanted to ask you and you and i both know sir is so much into gadgets and new toys yeah. and everything yeah. right and i even remember um you know when uh, the new macbook pro uh m1 um, pro and m1 pro max came out and all we had a chat and then sir said now nah, i'm getting the max i yeah. need the one with uh, uh you know uh, yeah, i i need the top end power. correct yeah, 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 yeah. then i threw a question to sir i said sir uh i'm just curious to know like what part of the life cycle of a song or a music production per se do you see the performance gain by having a high end system like is it when i just threw i said is it when you bounce the track when it takes while it takes 5 minutes on an m1 and then it would take 30 seconds on an m1 pro max is that where you see the performance gain or where exactly is the efficiency when uh, when you have a high end system and he said you know what i've just got it it's only a day old and it is sitting there and i i i'm still waiting to load all the plugins and all so i don't know yet i don't know that <laughs> so it's been a few months now since i had this conversation so i'm keen to know sir is using the new yeah m1 he is he is he, he is. is it's is his laptop the the m1 pro max yeah. uh, it's quite a souped up laptop i love it uh, <laughs> i've worked on it also once uh, yeah. the thing is you know chandra i feel like um, i don't know if you can it's it's a cycle um, what how i see this i don't yeah. know how how so would interpret this but this is how i see it um as in when these tech, these um, uh, hardware keep upgrading i'd call it a hardware upgrade because in it an is. m1 and an m1 max pro or whatever it's called mm. max mm. Uh, the chip is getting stronger it can Correct. do more cycles of processing uh yeah. in a certain in like a second or in a minute etc yeah. and that's that's what's happening uh so what happens is this is this this makes your life easier as in when you go because these software is so software is are also getting updated and becoming bigger and bigger correct so today um if i open up um, <clears throat> a logic 9 which is the old logic mm. on this new machine it will fly like the wind probably mm. you know what i mean mm. but because the new software where maybe omnisphere is really heavy um the newer machines that are coming up they are making the run time slower they are making the run time quicker sorry not slow quicker yeah. and um, but it's a chase like you know it's a parallel chase where where your hardware is getting 10% faster your software is getting making it 5% slower so you're finally only gaining 5% uh, right. so it's a continuous chase uh, where but if you stay behind in the chase like example today i have this old machine i have this imac from 2016 the one that i'm talking to you on right now yeah now when i load in the latest plugins on this one it hangs i can't <laughs> take it because okay. they're written for the new machines right yes, they're right. written with the architecture of the new multi- machines or they're written for to run well on the power of the new machines right so right. that's why you got to keep unfortunately keep up to date with these machines because mm. it's all like they're all hand in glove <laughs> with like oh you're making your machine quicker great we are going to like make our software more like complicated so it doesn't run on the old machine so they have to buy your machine and they have to buy my software as well uh But yeah. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people are still working on like like I'm still working on this 2016, 17. What I think it's a, I don't know. Yeah. Wait, yeah, it's a 2016, <laughs> uh, uh, 2014 iMac. <laughs> and one. and Logic Pro still works fine on that. Everything works. I mean, I not don't the not about. the latest version though, right? Everything latest latest. Huh. It, it hangs. It hangs. But it right. Works. I'm myself getting the new MacBook Pro soon. Yeah, yeah. B- because I know that this hangs now. It's 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 run its course. But I know a lot of people who still use the old machines and are still working on it. Right. I was just curious. That's all, man. But and yeah, I think it's not just the bounce time because the bounce time. No, the, that was just me. Real as, time. No, 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 no. Fair yeah. Enough. It's not yeah. just the bounce time. That's that's fine. 
a lot of times why we update our machines is like example with sir i know this happens a lot of times is when we are sitting to record with somebody and you know an idea has come up and he presses a button and it hangs <laughs> it's the most irritating feeling ever i can imagine for him because he's got this idea in his head it could be the biggest idea in the world it could be the next kun fire kun who knows correct so that machine hangs at that point what do you do so to avoid that you got to keep like making sure that your machine doesn't hang. and That's has it happened oh yeah at all huh so many times <laughs> and what, what did he do uh, uh, would he obviously get annoyed yeah he gets annoyed he's like ah oh, what is this <laughs> so much money for this machine <laughs> but it's a machine any machine will hang like it's like you know, it's at the end of the day it's a machine right okay even the, even the latest one might i don't know like you know sometimes it does like these are these are things you have no yeah. control over but uh, yeah it has happened a few times and it's very right. really annoying for all of us of course for yeah, some the need. most but we are all just like i don't know why it's hanging so it's just like you do that restart and then it's fine right sometimes yeah. it's just that sometimes it's like some cable you lose something i don't cuz uh, cuz i remember when we were having this chat about the m1 m1 pro max and all that and i told him sir uh, i'm using the first generation m1 uh, uh, you know macbook pro and yeah. so it was like that has the useless touch bar in it do you do you actually use it i said sir i've only started gotten to you uh, using this and he said it's useless <laughs> yeah the touch bar is pretty useless <laughs> I only use it for emojis and I'm sure sir would have always used just that for the emojis with the smileys I'm sure you'll agree with me <laughs> Am I, I right it's because I think it's because of the touch bar that he starts putting he started putting smileys in there I'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> And that is the only thing that I do like even in my work emails and all I just use the touch bar for the smiley or the thumbs up and that's it yeah. and whenever I use that you I think of so. sir <laughs> Whenever I see a smiling, a smiley or a thumbs up or a rose, I can only think of sir. <laughs> yeah, and a few, few uh, heart, heart emojis as well. I've seen yeah. it. Anyway, and dude, there is another very important topic that I wanted to touch on, and you've been part of that incredible project, Dil Bechara, and uh, absolutely love the songs that you have sung. And uh, you might remember I put an Instagram story yesterday or day before. um asking the fans if they had any questions for you oh, and yeah. i think there were 11 fans who said the same thing they wanted to hear from you about uh, your experience working in that project as well as singing in mai tumara and maskari and oh yeah and uh, yeah they wanted to hear from you so it's on behalf of them is what i'm asking how sweet how sweet of them uh yeah man uh, again like a just a dream project uh especially because i was one of the first projects like i went in and handled uh, yeah and did music supervision for an entire album yeah so it was it was special from that point of view and uh, i was learning a lot mm. uh, i was involved from uh, you know like from the scratch version of the songs to the final versions of the songs so seeing a song grow in front of you and like really become its final you know thing which people then give so much love to was mm. just very special and um, so I was very charged about that film and uh, we were you know so that was also extremely exciting he was very very particular about how he wanted that film to sound mm. um i got to work with some great people like again in that project also i got to record some with some fantastic people like uh, i remember the arijit sir recording session was phenomenal i had so much fun in that learned so much from him his process how he sings a song what he is thinking about mm. what are what are his takeaways when he hears a, like you know a song that he has to sing for the first time and like how he goes about it makes it sound so good or a sunidhi ma'am or a shreya mm. ma'am mm. mohit um worked with all these people in that in that phase it was great um again of course it was a cherry on top that i got to sing two songs um you know and got to sing little little parts in other songs as well like you know chorus yeah. in um Uh, yeah. Bechara and uh, got the little mouth trumpet in in the last song in uh, in friend zone so um like it was it was i was very involved and i think that's why it was so close and special to me um mukesh habra was also yeah. really sweet he was he was completely like i 
you know, completely leave it up to him. And so the music is music is his forte. He's so good at it. Who am I to say anything? He he will do the best. And that was so f- like you know good because Sir is like so free and able to experiment with things. And that's why we could do songs like Afrida and do songs like yeah. Miranam Kizi, uh, which are like so you know so fresh and so new. Like mm. um, and I think overall. Um, the just living with that project for so long it it made it very emotional i think yeah. um i didn't realize how how big of an emotional part of my yeah. life it will become because and how big a deal it will become because yeah. when when mai tumhara i dub when i dubbed mai tumhara um i think honestly it it was it was somewhere meant to be where i i was supposed to sing that song because i honestly don't know where where all of that energy came from and how mm. it sounded the way it did sound because there was some special moment because i remember that day we dubbed it in pawai and it was me and hiral and hiral was recording me and mm. um, i just um, and she was shocked as well after the recording she was like everything okay like what's happened to you and i was just in a in a certain mood wow. and i was in a, and i i could feel all all of the the emotions that i had gone through in my life in that song while dubbing it so that was some and i mean that stays right for life yeah. and uh, it was really sad to hear of whatever happened with sushant yeah. and yeah um and yeah i was i was somewhere you know i was just uh, like um, you know i was happy that people love the song and connected with it and can remember mm. him through it i think that's that's beautiful that right? it's yeah. good to be a part of something where someone's fondly remembering somebody uh, and somebody mm. so so talented and so brilliant yeah so yeah um Indeed. and then uh, maskari was another world you know uh, maskari was the first song so just uh, told me yeah so here's a voice note and like do what you want like mm. have fun yeah. with it and come back to me and then i remember that was the song that i kind of did a lot of production in the beginning and played mm. it to him mm. um and then he uh, find did the final whole thing and i remember um, he wanted to be like a really fun funky song and uh, Mm. um he said just be yourself in it like i want your style of singing and i want your uh, whatever you think like some guitar parts and stuff like that so i designed a lot of things for that song it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun cuz first song where i got to do something like that like produce be a part so of good. it from a production point of view as well and uh, yeah um very nice okay <laughs> Beautiful, buddy. Beautiful. So soulful. <laughs> I love Thank it. You, I love it. Thank you. Love your voice, man. I've always Thank been you. a fan of your voice. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And uh, 
uh what's the other bit uh, i also would um, i i i have a song that i would like you to sing when we are close to wrapping up we are towards the end of the podcast i'm not okay. going to keep you longer and uh, <laughs> uh get trashed later no, but uh but i do want to touch just one more song uh one of your own ish okay. tera mera with sunidhi oh, nice. ji and uh, i personally love it when it obviously came out i was in touch with you as well when uh, mm-hmm. when it was released and i absolutely love the hook so uh talk me through about that song but more particularly about uh because you have produced it right yeah and yeah. i would like yeah. to know how uh, how you arrived at that hook because i i personally like the hook of that song so yeah. much Thank so you. i'm just keen to hear from you about it buddy um uh, you know it's it, the that song that song actually went out for a very long time i think i composed uh, it in i don't remember, remember like 2017 is that right 20, yeah yeah um, i had just come up with a piano melody i think it was something like uh what key is it yeah like just just the main hook when it Mm-hmm. and i was just playing keys and this came to me this idea and um uh, then there was nothing written to it it was just uh, gibberish initially and mm-hmm. um, one day i was sitting and i thought you know this can turn into something that's like an mm-hmm. anthem i wanted to have that like big anthemic feel and uh, then i came up with the chorus which kind of opens up right because it becomes like yeah. oh. like it becomes really big. i like that part yeah um, yeah so so uh i remember um we we wrote the song i had i obviously had a female part in mind because i sang that whole section as like in falsetto actually as a, as a, like to as a reference for for a female i was like do me do da da and i sang it like that i left it in the scratch because i was like i need someone to sing it and uh, we were just listening to some scratches and I remember also in fact I was talking to Hiral about this we mm. were we were chatting about this song because at that point I was releasing a few tracks and I was like you know and this was during Dil Becharam I was playing her the song the song the li- lines were all written and yeah. I had roughly sung them I was playing her the song and I was like what do you think you know like I want someone you know for this I want someone to sing this female part and we had just recorded Maskhari as well like a yeah. few weeks back correct and i was like i feel like sunidhi ma'am would be perfect for she like yeah she would be ideal for this song like she would it's like it's made for her and i was like yeah you know i mean it, she has that bulan like big voice as well and she Correct. has that beauty in her voice as well and that's what the song needed yeah so when you can do both uh and i remember i was like should i should i ask her i don't know i mean you know i'm like so i don't know if she do it i don't know um and he was she was just like yeah dude just like text her and ask her you know what i mean what will happen mm-hmm. max to max she'll say no so i remember I immediately i texted her saying hi ma'am um, uh, i have this track that i worked on it's one of my independent songs i want to release it and uh, i would love for you to sing it mm-hmm. so she's like okay send it to me and mm-hmm. i was like okay Great. that was that was amazing i thought you know i was expecting like a, oh okay who's producing it like well, who's mm-hmm. uh, like who which label this that but nothing she was so sweet she's like yeah just send it to me let's see let me see how it i sent her the song and i kid you not in one hour i got a reply saying cool send me the stems i'll sing it foof and i was just like <laughs> first i couldn't believe it so i looked at it like we were both like jumping with joy of course she was also excited she was like amazing this is so cool and then i remember i spoke to her after that and i said ma'am i'm so glad you liked the song if you have anything specific in mind please tell me i'm very open to criticism i'm very open yeah. to any changes that you like and she did say that yeah yeah you know i want to try the uh, verse my way and i was like please go for it she like it's a beautiful mm-hmm. song she loved it she loved how it was mm-hmm. written and i told her it was written by shivangi tiwari who has written the song for me and she was very happy we tried another version of the verse with different lyrics because i was like maybe we can try another option but she mm-hmm. loved the original so she said no 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 stick with what was already there it was really nice and uh, we dubbed it and um, yeah it it just so happened that i was obviously going to release it myself initially and then i was speaking to her and i was saying ma'am the song is ready now you she liked the mix everything was done and i was like i want to release it uh do you think we should do uh, approach somebody and she said you know what i'm doing a song with merchant records right now and they are really cool they are doing some great stuff maybe you can speak to them should i connect you with them and i was like no 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 ma'am i know salim sir very well let me try and speak to him mm. she's like okay cool um and uh, i sent him a text saying hi sir we've done this song and uh, i'd really love for you to hear it 
So he said, cool, send it to me. Same thing. I sent it to him and he was also super excited. He said, yeah, I called Sunidhi right after the song and we spoke about it and we spoke about how talented you are and it was very sweet. Like I had a very sweet conversation about that. And he was like, well, we'd love to pick up this song. I was like, great. This sounded Super. perfect. Also because, uh, you know, being musicians themselves, Salim Suleiman, I think, are mm. a fantastic label to be with because they are, you know, they understand music. They understand okay. where musicians come from. Uh, the things we go through and um, yeah. how to respect each other's music as well, right? Uh, and that was beautiful for me because and having Suni, Sunidhi Ma'am on board obviously was the icing on the cake because uh, it gave, uh, you know, another credibility to a song or to be very honest, like, you know, it was just like um, if Sunidhi Ma'am liked the song and sang it, then it must be something. Let's check it out. For sure. You know, uh, so all in all, I am so grateful for that song and I'm so happy about that song however it came through it has really changed my life uh, humongously mm. I, I feel like it also did um, a lot for me from the perspective of in the industry like you know people who heard it started mm. really taking me seriously and saying oh this boy is you know you know he's he's doing something Kuch to hai, sahi hai. <laughs> so I mean that was very important for me because um Apart from everything that's gone down and like I've sung stuff for Sir and worked so closely with Sir, yeah. um, you know, people did not know what I was doing majorly, right? Um, so mm. it was it was it was a huge eye opener for 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 me as well. Like, okay, that there are people who like my music and I can do more of this. Mm. So great Very experience. Good, Fantastic experience. I personally love that song, and I I've told you when it released okay. as well, and I've I've heard it so many times even at, when it when it was released. So I really like the hook. That's why I I was very keen on asking you, particularly about the hook on how you arrived at that and things like that. That's all. Thank and you, thank you. since I uh, I'm just keen to know, like for example, uh, me I'm working in IT as you know, and then we guys have what's called this LinkedIn, and we have this profile that I've done this 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 is my skill set, mm-hmm. and these are the projects and organizations. What do you guys as musicians have? Like, where, where's your profile? I mean, just so that, is there something like that? Does that exist? Or is there a LinkedIn for musicians? Unfortunately, it is Instagram right now. Unfortunately or fortunately, I would say. Right. Uh, un- 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 unfortunately, because the, the kind of stuff that works on Instagram is... Uh, sometimes not necessarily related to music, uh, you know, like those mm. reels and all those dance videos and all that stuff. But <laughs> that's what predominantly do- happens right now yeah, these you days. Know, you know. Yeah, but to be honest, right now um, th- there's no such thing. I think I'm, I'm right. I mean, at least I'm not aware of uh, that's right. LinkedIn for musicians. Uh, but uh, definitely, if there was something uh, like that, it would be really helpful. So it's a great idea. You should try and come up with something like that like it's a fantastic idea to connect uh, and I've keep brainstormed a few ideas with sir already so yeah no this is but, a very cool idea right but uh, I feel like right now it's very important to keep your presence felt on social media as an artist uh, yeah. however you do like be unique be creative come up with something interesting like I loved what what Charlie Puth is doing right now his social presence is phenomenal there's yeah. he's doing so he he did this whole thing where pre his album he released this thing where he was making songs in a studio, ideas of songs and connecting with people about it. Mm. And everybody was waiting for that album to drop because they've already heard snippets of the songs and heard how right. it was being made. So they become a part of the story. So, I mean, there are unique ways to use Instagram and uh, yeah. showcase your music, but that's honestly the only way. 90% of people who I work with, like, especially for things like shows and stuff like that, they worry about, oh, achha, uh, hai, uh, you know, good, good. You've sung all this very good, but how many, like how many uh, followers do you have? It all at the end of the day comes down to that. Correct. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that way, right? Because it doesn't I necessarily mean, say. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, there are, a f- uh, there are a lot of people who are doing really well on Instagram and they are very talented and they're doing it really well. Uh, one of them is like someone like Junita. She's doing so mm. well. She's mm. fantastic on stage. She's a brilliant singer, brilliant artist. So it's there are its pros and cons, I would say. And okay. she's she's like she's made it through YouTube. We wouldn't have found Junita. It was a fair yeah. for YouTube. Yeah. Maybe yeah. God knows. Like because she was all the way in Canada, and uh, so it has its pros and cons. It's it's a beautiful place to really 
click with your audiences and become somebody but um, it's also a place where there is a little bit of delusion and like people are you know yeah. running behind the wrong thing as well um this is going back to everything mm mm no man yeah i mean yeah this is something that uh i always wondered rather in terms of like because i've i've, I've got other ideas as well uh yeah. with regards to music which which i can obviously talk to you about off the record uh but i always wondered where's like we're not going to be relying on wikipedias and stuff because we all know anyone can update and then it may not be yeah. 100% accurate and things like that right okay. but yeah anyway this is where yeah, the question yeah. came from and uh closing thoughts um concert on the 24th uh i'm i'm sure you're excited uh hey. do you know what you're singing <laughs> 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 you can't talk about it is it god because you guys got to come and enjoy it like or or log into the stream otherwise it's no fun yeah but but i can tell you one thing for sure um, mm. it's going to be a power packed concert and i'm excited right? yeah yeah because yeah, the kind of people who are on the show like the artists i am excited give me clue just give there. me clue no, no, it's I only 2 days away <laughs> <laughs> no no but it's going to be amazing it's going to be it's going to be uh, phenomenal like it's it's going to be that big concert that uh, everybody is expecting at the end of the expo the expo so, right extremely excited extremely excited to be a part of it the the old crew is also coming back uh no 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 we have uh, the same crew but just okay. new a uh, couple of new singers new in the sense couple of more singers right. uh, who are involved in this i am okay. unfortunately not allowed to speak much more than this <laughs> <laughs> okay then you can talk about something else that uh, i can speak about yes <laughs> huh i said that i can speak about <laughs> and PS1. anything else PS1. PS1. So PS1 again. I'm actually only involved in the Hindi side of things because the the, the album is going to release in a couple of languages. So um, again, you're in for a treat, guys. Like wow, yeah. music. I have have been having so much fun listening to it. Uh, all the songs. Um, again, how many songs? If I if I leak any information about PS1, someone will come and kill me. <laughs> and then <laughs> later on, sir will kill me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're both in save both of us from this question, <laughs> and Bunny sir will come and kill both of us then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, I know, I know, it's super confident. No, but but uh, really, really excited, really excited. Mm. I've I've heard a lot about that monkey song or the monkey chant in it. Yeah, yeah, there is there is something like that, which okay. is also very is it good. Cool. Like like what what's your initial thoughts? Very very cool, very right. very cool. Um, I think um. can't give away oh uh, uh, yeah okay <laughs> so what can you talk nothing uh, i can talk about any i can talk about nothing about ps1 <laughs> right okay dude we have come to the end of the podcast but before i let you go i have to get you to sing something that i really like uh and something that you have sung earlier um as a cover oh which one tumhe mohabbat Tum hai wo video mein sing oh god okay i'd love to it's such a beautiful song man. i'm going to sing a little bit of it ready hmm teri aankhon mein chhakne wala tere hothon pe kaapne Wanted to go ahead. It's sounding so good. Uh, okay, I don't know the chords of the song. Okay, let me sing it without any. Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma, huh? I'll just sing it from the start without any music. That's easier. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Tere aankhon mein jhakne wala, tere hoot 
आंखों पे कांपने वाला तेरी बातों में बोलने वाला बारातों में खोलने वाला गर्म साहसों में घुल रहा है जो वो अकेले में मिल रहा जो ख्वाब में आके प्यार करता है वो सौ बार तुम पे मरता है ख्वाब में आके प्यार करता है रो सौ बार तुम पे मरता है खींच के बाजू में ले ले जो कान की बालिकों को सूझ जो हक जताता है जो सभी तुम पे पूछना चाहता हूँ मैं तुम पे हक जताता है वो सभी तुम पे पूछना चाहता हूँ मैं तुमसे कौन है कैसा कौन है कैसा कैसा दिखता है जानता हूं कि नहीं मैं वो नहीं मैं वो नहीं वो कि जिससे तुम्हें मोहब्बत है तुम्हें मोहब्बत है Wow, amazing to it, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh, not an easy song at all, man. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> wow, Ooh. dude, absolutely loved talking to you, man. And you'll always be someone really special for me. And uh, I've, 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 I've enjoyed interacting with you. And then I've, I've had so much fun podcast one point oh. And then I was always very, very excited to have you as part of this two point oh journey as well. <laughs> and uh, so man almost 2 hours of your time man no one does this thank you so much man really yeah, appreciate it great time thank you thank you and so much and is there anything else that you wanted to touch on that we may not have touched on or absolutely any topic under the sun that you would like to talk about and oh, no, or your I've... fans would need to know i think i think we've done very well with i think touching everything i know right yeah i'm excited i'm excited i'm also excited about uh, hero panti So yeah. I'm, I'm waiting to see what sir has done with uh, some. You worked on that? Ah uh, no, I haven't worked on that. I haven't okay. Worked on that yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm really excited actually to see some stuff that from there. Uh, so um, what have you heard about it? Like the your, trailer your, came out. Trailer yeah, I know. Came out. Trailer, yeah. One, so our song. Tell me some inside cool. stories. <laughs> I have no inside stories because again, I have not worked on it at all. So uh, yeah. Thank God, <laughs> I don't talk about it at all. Because I remember when uh, Dil Pe Chara was yet to be released, Nakul had come on the podcast, oh, and yeah. then he told me the uh, you know the the thing where uh, he was at the studio and you were also at the studio, I think, and uh-huh. he you got him to hear Afrida and Nakul Those doing were... nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something else. And Man. you know what happened, Rida. So the al- so there was a lot of hype around Afrida and Nakul had yeah. built so much. You'll go nuts when it releases. You know that. So I kept that as the last track to hear when the when the soundtrack released. Uh huh. And that track didn't work for me, man. Oh, it didn't work for you. Oh, <laughs> Just God. didn't work. And oh, I tried happens. very hard, and it yeah. was okay. It didn't work for me. No, sure, fair enough. I think uh, also also you have to remember. That what he heard was the film version of the album. You should go back and hear the film version of the album. I haven't watched the movie yet. It's it's different. Is that right? It's a little different. Okay. Check out the film Maybe version. Maybe I should. It's, Maybe it's I should. 
it's a really cool it's on hotstar though right yeah it's on hotstar yeah we don't get hotstar here oh right dude it's been phenomenal having you on the podcast man thank you so thank much you, man and you made the effort to go all the way to your studio i felt very bad that no, no, uh, i pushed you to do it from the studio i'm so sorry no no my pleasure this was so much fun actually this was great i wouldn't have been able to play and sing all of these things so i'm, I'm very glad to be here man thank you so much